guys, welcome to another chemical engineering tutorial brought to you by the Chem Eng student. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the McCabe Thiel method using Microsoft Excel. So we take a quick um, recap on what the McCabe Thiel method actually is. Now, we have another tutorial which looks at the McCabe Thiel method from a theoretical standpoint and all the equations that govern the McCabe Thiel method in distillation. So I'll put a link in the description to that and you can check that one out. But essentially the McCabe Thiel method is a convenient graphical method for solving the material balances within the equilibrium relationship of distillation. And the, it's basically a very simple procedure for the construction of the diagram, which looks something like this. So what we have here is we have our uh, operating line, which is this diagonal line. So that's when x equals y. We have our feed points, we have our top and our bottom uh, compositions, and we have our um, rectifying section, also known as a enriching section, and we have our stripping section, which is sometimes called the bottom section. And we also have this thing called a Q line, which we'll look at that in a bit more detail. But as we've seen before, we have several different equations that we have to use in order to solve and construct the McCabe Thiel graph. Now, just a couple of the key points that we have to use is for the enriching section operating line, uh, we would use this relationship here, whereby we have y in terms of x. So we also have this parameter r, which is our reflux ratio, which is essentially the, the ratio of material that leaves the distillation column than that that is re-entered into the distillation column. And this is a very, very critical and key variable within a distillation column design. Now, one of the powers of the McCabe Thiel method is it allows us to determine graphically the theoretical number of stages required in order to achieve the desired concentrations at the top and the bottom um, products. But you can also use this uh, equation here, which is, is basically a logarithmic um, ratio between the composition of the top product and the composition of the uh, bottom product uh, with your key component divided by the logarithm of the relative, the average relative volatility of the mixture. So again, if you have all this data, you can determine the theoretical number of, um, minimal number of stages, and you can use that in conjunction with the McCabe Thiel method in order to validate your chart. Now, a quick reminder of what the Q line actually represents. In essence, the Q line is dependent on the state of the feed, so the state of the mixture that comes into the distillation column. Now, if you have saturated liquid, your Q line is a perfect vertical straight line, i.e. you have a Q value of 1, whereby the slope is to infinity. It doesn't, it's a complete 90 degree angle. Saturated vapour is the complete opposite, whereby we have a complete horizontal line, with a Q value of zero and a slope of zero. Now, if we have a mixed vapor liquid uh, system or we have a subcooled liquid system, then our Q line will be between the um, saturated liquid and saturated vapor um, Q line values. So for example, for subcooled liquid, your Q value will have to be greater than zero and your slope will be positive if you have a mixed uh, vapor liquid system, your Q line will be between zero and one, because zero would be um, saturated liquid, one being saturated vapor, and your, uh, your line would be negative. Now in this example, we're gonna look at the equilibrium data for a methanol water system operating at one atmosphere. Now we're told to use a reflux ratio of 2.15, and we want to determine, using the McCabe Thiel method, the theoretical number of stages required for a system to achieve the following set of parameters. So we have a top product of 92% methanol, 
a bottom product of 15% methanol and a saturated liquid feed which contains 40% methanol. So if we come across to our Excel sheet, we will have a look at how to actually solve this. So this is the completed um, Excel sheet that we will use. Um, but here, what I'll do is I'll put a link in the description to this very Excel sheet that you can download and you can play about um, with the values and use your own system uh, to create your McCabe Thiel uh, chart. Now this is it in its finalized form, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the blank um, set and we're gonna uh, construct this uh, chart. Now, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna construct this in a, a series of stages. So rather than fill out all of the, these values first and then plot it, we'll plot it in real time as um, we progress through. Now, the first thing that we want to do is we want to address our um, operating line, our theoretical operating line. And that is the, the perfect diagonal uh, where x equals y. So that's basically saying that the composition of uh, the liquid is the same as the composition in the vapour. Now, in order to achieve this, we simply have to say that when x is equal um, to zero, because we want the limits, y will be equal to zero. And therefore, when x is one, we want to say y is also one. Now, this is the data that was provided to us, sorry, 0 0.92, um, in the problem statement. So this is the data uh, that we were provided with, um, and we'll use that um, throughout the entire system. We don't need it for um, this part, but we will need it for the remaining three sections. So the first thing that we'll do is we will make a plot of our operating line, and then we'll plot our equilibrium data here, because that's ultimately what we need in order to construct our McCabe Thiel method uh, chart. So if we click on uh, the blank chart area, we'll come to chart design, and we'll come to select uh, data source, and we'll add our first data source, and we'll call this the operating uh, line. So we'll take our X coordinates, which are these, and then we'll take our corresponding y coordinates, which are these. So that gives us our perfect um, line between zero and one. So that is saturated liquid, sat uh, saturated uh, vapor. Now, the next thing that we'll do is we will plot our uh, equilibrium data. Uh, data like so. And then what this is gonna be is this is going to be our x coordinates, and this will be our y coordinates. And we'll hit OK. So, what this now tells us is this is the equilibrium relationship for methanol in the liquid phase and in the vapor phase for our methanol water system. So, again, this will be available to you at the download um, in the link in the description um, of this video. Now the next part is we want to make a plot of our Q line and we're told the state of the feed point and the state of the feed point was saturated liquid. So the question is how can we actually plot our Q line on this graph because it's easy enough to do by hand. But the first point would be the Q line is dependent on the composition of the feed. So we know the feed point is at 40% methanol. Now, of course, we had to divide these by 100% to get them into their decimalized form. Now, what's very, very important here is rather than writing in the value like that, it's a good idea to relate all of these calculations to the raw data. So is that if the raw data changes, your entire chart will automatically change as well. So from here, what we're going to say is that the x coordinate is going to be 0 0.4 because that's the feed here. Now, the corresponding y coordinate must also be 0 0.4. And that's because of the relationship between the operating line. Because whatever x is, 
the corresponding is going to be the same for y. So what we can do here is we can make that also equal to y. Now for the top part, it doesn't necessarily matter how far, so long as it surpasses this point here. But generally because our limits are up to 1, then the x coordinate isn't going to change. Right? That's still going to remain 0 0.4. It's still going to be from this point. And that's what this um, grey highlighted cell is here. Is that This basically tells us that this is the dependent variable dependent on whether we have saturated liquid or saturated vapour. Now in this case we have saturated liquid, so this is going to give us a value of 1. So when we do that, we've now created our Q line. So if we come back to our chart, we'll select our data, we'll come down here, and we'll call this uh, the Q line. And then we'll take our X coordinates, which are these, and the corresponding Y coordinates, which are these. And we'll hit OK. So now you can see we have this Q line. Now this part here, it doesn't really matter as such. This is the important part here in this region. But it's easy enough uh, just to extend it all the way up to 1. Now probably the most challenging part is going to be the enriching section and the bottom section operating lines. Because this blue line is in theory. This is a theoretical operating line. The enriching section and the bottom section here, this is the actual relationship between the systems. So this is dependent on the reflux ratio and the um, desired compositions of the top and the bottom stream. Because ultimately what we want to do is we want to know at what point does these operating lines intersect the Q line. Because that's the, that's the transition between the um, the feed point and the operating line for the enriching section and the operating line for the bottom section. So the first thing that we'll do here is we have to ensure that we basically get our coordinates around the correct way. So the enriching section is at the top of the column. So therefore, we want the top composition um, of methanol. So that's going to be our 0 0.92. Now you'll notice this 0 has appeared basically from nowhere, but we'll come to that in just a second. Now, we don't actually know what the coordinate is, the y coordinate is, for the intersection between the tie line for the enriching section and the Q line. So this is actually a linear interpolation stage, and you can see the formula up here. I'll Once we input the values, I'll highlight the uh, linear interpolation again, and you can have a look um, at that in more detail. But in order to construct your linear interpolation, you need a point above and a point below. Now, you can pick any value that you want, but the easiest value in this case would be to put zero. Now the question remains, well, how do we find the value of y? Well, if you can remember from the enriching section operating line equation, the y in terms of x, because we make this value y, a 0, we actually neglect one of the terms. So what this now becomes is it becomes the y coordinate for um, the the top part, so that's the, the composition at the top of the column, so we have that, divided by the reflux ratio plus 1. And we divide that, and we see here we get a value of 0 0.292. Now, the question is, what would be the corresponding x coordinate for the tie line? Well, that would have to be 0 0.4 because the x coordinate is here, we just need to know what this y coordinate is. So if we put in 0 0.4, then what you will see is that we have 0 0.565. And this is the coordinate that the enriching section operating line will intersect. So now we can come to our chart, we can select our data, we'll bring this in, and we'll call this the enriching um, line. 
and our coordinates are going to be these two. We aren't going to include the zero. That's just to provide us with the linear interpolation. And then we'll have these two coordinates here, like so. So now you can see that we start from our top target composition of 92%. We now have determined the slope because we now know this point here. Now, arguably, that has to be the same coordinate for the bottom section because the bottom section must start from here and then work its way down. So that's why this cell is linked to that cell. Again, we want to make it as fully automatic as possible. Now, if you look at the formula bar up here, then you'll be able to see the, the sequence for the linear interpolation calculation. Granted, there is renditions of the linear interpolation sequence, but if you want, pause the video and you can check the linear interpolation calculation as well. But again, you'll have access to this Excel sheet so you can play about with it and download it um, at your own pace. Now, finally, the last uh, line that we need to plot is our bottom section operating line. And this is now going to be dependent on the bottom composition. So our bottom composition is 0 0.15. And again, based on the theoretical operating system, the Y coordinate would have to be the same. Now, it's exactly the same principle as we talked about here, that the X coordinate for the second point must be the feed um, composition, the 0 0.4. It has to be because that is this coordinate. That coordinate there is 0 and 0 0.5, uh, sorry, 0 0.4 and 0 0.565. So that coordinate must be exactly the same as that one there. The only difference is that this is now the bottom target um, for the bottom product at composition. So we come to our chart and we'll select our data for the final time. And this time we'll call this the bottom uh, line. And again, we'll have our two X coordinates with our corresponding uh, Y coordinates. We'll hit OK. And that's as now constructed our uh, McCabe Thiel graph. Now the question is, how can we interpret what the minimum number of stages is actually going to be? Well, the way that we do this is, you can normally do this by hand, but um, because we're using Excel, we can uh, use the line tool. And what we're going to do is, in theory, what you would say is that if it was indeed the theoretical operating line, you would draw a straight line all the way across until you hit the equilibrium line and all the way down. But that's in theory. That's why we needed the actual um, enriching operating line and the actual bottom operating line. Because now, when we draw our line, so it's going to be a series of horizontal and vertical lines. We start from the feed point. Uh, sorry, we start from the top product and we draw a line until we hit the equilibrium line. Once we hit the equilibrium line, we then draw a vertical line down until we touch the um, enriching section operating line. We don't go all the way down to the theoretical value. And we just repeat the same process over and over again. So what you actually do here is you create a series of steps. And each complete step represents a stage within the distillation column. Now, arguably, there is a technique that you can do in Excel that will automatically allow you um, to determine these, but I think it's always a good idea to put these in manually. And the reason for that is we will do some preliminary analysis on this just to show the relationship um, between all these lines. So for this particular setup that we have, we have one stage, two stage, three stage, four stage, five stage. So in order for us to achieve a 92% methanol at the top and a 15% methanol at the bottom, we must have five minimum of five stages in order to achieve those targets. 
Now the question is, what would happen if we changed some of these parameters? And this is why it's so important that you make this automatic. You link all the cells to this data input because then it will change and you can get some preliminary analysis. Now you can see here that we're very, very close to the 0 0.15, but we haven't actually touched it there. Therefore, if we would actually fall short, so that's why we need to extend all the way across. Say for example, the feed doesn't come in at 40% methanol, say it comes in at 55% methanol. Then what we can do here is if we go 0 0.55, then it will automatically change everything in the Excel. So what you can now see is that our lines obviously don't really change in the enriching section, but they do change in the bottom section. So if I adjust our lines like so, and we draw this all the way across, what you can actually see here is we have surpassed using four trays instead of five. So by increasing the percent of methanol in the feed has actually reduced the number of trays. Now you can play about with that in all sorts of configurations. You could say, well, I want, you know, 5% in the system. So what you would then find is that you would need more stages, all right, in order to achieve very stringent um, requirements. So if you go for a very pure product, you're going to need a lot of stages in order to achieve those targets. But say we come back to uh, the original setup that we had and we change the reflux ratio and you'll see the power of the reflux ratio. So say instead of it being 2.15, we change it to 1.15. Then you'll see the difference and in the intersection between the operating lines and the Q line. And that in itself is highly, highly important. So what I'll do is just so that you can see the effect is I'm going to move all of these down. And in fact, we'll just delete all these. And we'll do one final um, configuration just to let you see the impact of the reflux ratio on the given system. So same thing as before, we start from the top product, we come down, and this time, I think you can see what's going to happen. Because remember, the reflux ratio is the ratio for the amount of material that is going to leave the distillation column against the amount of material that's going to re-enter the column. So you'll notice that it has a greater impact really on the enriching section because ultimately that's at the top of the column. Now, one of the, the key things as well to note is that, um, now you can see here that is pretty much bang on the money, but you always want to be sure that you cover it. So I would always go one extra just to be on the safe side. Oops, um, like so. Just add this one in, like so. Now, if we count the number of stages, we have one, two, three, four, five, six stages. So we've actually increased the number of stages in order to achieve the same targets of 92%, 15%, and the feed is still coming in at 40%. But by manipulation of the reflux ratio, we've actually increased by lowering the reflux ratio. So that is the end of this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Hopefully this was helpful in understanding and how to apply uh, the McCabe Thiel method to a Microsoft Excel. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us reach as many chemical engineering students as possible. We're also taking uh, recommendations for new videos, so please leave a comment as to any video or any tutorial that you would like to see featured next. Thanks for watching and hope to see you in another video.